Welcome to episode 86 of Uncovering the Corners of the World podcast. I'm your host, Karina Kusmala. Using research and my personal experiences where I actually set foot in some of these places, I'll be describing some of the unknown attractions in both the U.S. and around the world. Returning with another thrilling adventure on this two-part episode is Colin Sugg. Besides being a good friend and traveler, he is the host of the podcast History from the Back Pages, where he reviews new and older films such as Dial M for Murder, The Wicker Man, and Blackberry. He's also the host of the podcast Chicago Soccer Talk with Colin, a sports podcast where he informs listeners of the latest Chicago Fire FC and Chicago Red Stars updates. Colin co-hosts the podcast The Bull and Hawks Sports Show with his friend Ben, where they discuss recent sports games as well as interview student athletes from various sports. In episode 85, Colin talked about the Starbucks farm and some cultural differences between the U.S. and Costa Rica. On this week's episode, Colin talks about some of the other landmarks and attractions he saw in Costa Rica, such as the waterfalls, the National Theater, and more. So the second day, or for, I guess, technically, on Sunday, we went to the La Paz Waterfall Gardens and Animal Sanctuary. That was a ton of fun. You had two options, because they give you two excursions options you could choose. Either the La Paz Waterfall Gardens, or go to a volcano. So we chose the La Paz Waffle Gardens. We wanted that one because you could see animals that had wildlife where the volcano did not. So we're like, let's go to the gar- waterfall. What'd you see? What kind of wildlife? Oh, there's a lot of great, great native, like, Costa Rican animals there. Like, for example, they had a really great aviary. So lots of different birds. You could see macaws, toucans. You could, you're, like, right up close to, like, they were, like, basically, like, touching you, like, or, like, right on you. Which was cool. They were calm. I was like, hi. They just looked at me and I said, did do anything. Well, the macaws were, you weren't like right on you. They were like like in a enclosure. Or but the okay. two kids were like flying around right next to you. They were fine. The main attraction definitely people would come far and wide to see was the sloth. No way. That, yeah, the sloth's the national animal of Costa Rica. If you watch any marketing video, marketing ad, they advertise the sloth constantly. Many people who go to Costa Rica, their main purpose is to see the sloth. And they had two. I took pictures. I was like, oh, because I wanted to see a sloth so bad. I was so excited. And I was worried at first because the tour guy said they've only seen one in the wild in like over 100 years in the Central Valley part of Costa Rica where we were. But there was two at the Wildlife Center, so we got to see those. That's cool. They were like sound asleep because they sleep like most of the whole day. But they, one of them was like moving a bit. I mean, they move very slowly, and isn't it that it takes them a full day to get down from the tree or something like that? Yeah, they're very slow. They sleep, like, 24-7, but he's moving his arm a bit, so at least he was, like, something. No, that was really fun. Uh, some other meals they had, hummingbird, they had a hummingbird area, uh, butterfly area, frog area. Brian loves frogs, so that was his main reason he wanted to be there. So we got to see a lot of frogs. They had some poison dart frogs, tree frogs, and they had like the red poison dart frogs. So like the super small ones are red. So that was cool. It was hard to see them because they're so small. They're like super, super small. I thought they were bigger. They, not like the size of like a fingernail. <laughs> well, they're like bigger than that, but very small. Okay. I mean, you can tell they're poisonous because they're bright red, so you know to stay away from them. They were behind glass, so. But still, they you know to stay away. Okay. They also had a lot of jungle cats, so the jungle cat exhibit was great, like the area. They had ocelot, which was cool. Um, house cat. He's bigger than Tom, but they they described it as like a, a domestic cat is bigger. Uh, they had a mountain lion or a cougar. I guess it depends on where you live, like which one you use. And then they had Jaguar. That was the coolest. What was the coolest? It kind of cut you off. Jaguar. Oh, nice. They had two Jaguars in there. And they they were so cool. They were, like, right easy to take picture. The one was sleeping, like, super close to the in- enclosure. And like, they had great photo opportunities. So I took a picture. Mm-hmm. His name was Tomas, the zookeeper said. All the cats had names. That's just what I remembered. 
And then we went to the waterfalls. There was five of them. And once you finish the animals, there's a stairs and a sign that says waterfall or cascade, depending on your eating. You go down there and you basically have opportunities to be at like tree points, lookout points where you can look at the waterfalls up close and you just keep walking down and up the stairs to see all the waterfalls. You see one and walk like 200 meters, see another one, just keep going. Okay. Really beautiful, gorgeous. I can see why people want to go to the waterfalls because that's one of the huge attractions in that part of Costa Rica. Most of the days, you would leave like at 8 a.m. sharp and then traveling. So, for example, that when we got home, like the hotel made four. And then we would do chilling stuff like going to the pool or just going to lunch or relaxing, different stuff. And then the next day was the last main day, which was going to San Jose, the capital city, to do a walking tour. Uh, f- fun facts, funny thing, but do you know the song by Dan Warwick from, like, long ago, 1960s? Do you know it, The Way to San Jose? I might have heard of it. Do you know the way to San Jose? Like, like that. But uh, it's talking about San Jose, California, not Costa Rica. But in Costa Rica, they think of it as, like, a theme song or, like, it's important song for the country. Where'd you go in San Jose? So we uh, went to the city. We saw a lot of museums. So, for example, the National Theater, it's an opera house. They have plays now. It's more of a tourist attraction now, but they still host opera and plays and different shows. For example, when the president wins his election, they go there. They have, like, a fancy dinner. Every time the president? Like, I believe so. Like, every term or every new, like, new election, the new president goes. The fun facts about the National Theater is that in 1897, there was this legendary opera singer, and the president of Costa Rica invited her to go to perform, but she said that it wasn't good enough, like they didn't have a good enough space for her to sing. So she needed like a palace built. So they built the National Theater to accommodate her. So she must have been legendary. They didn't say her name, but she must have been, because it was beyond gorgeous. It was stunning. The National Theater is one of the most gorgeous buildings I've ever seen. The outside was very nice, but the inside, Gorgeous murals, gorgeous paintings on the ceiling. I would definitely love to see play or opera there. It's very well kept from long ago. You mentioned murals and paintings. Do you remember what they were of? Uh, there's one that's excellent. It was by a French Impressionist. He was uh, commissioned to paint it for National Theater. He had never been to Costa Rica, so all of his knowledge was from letters. Um, he, had, he, had, he had to design it, like, so he had people designing his, I guess, because he never went to Costa Rica as far as I know. But some of the stuff he got wrong because he didn't know. What did he get wrong? It's his nitpicky stuff. I would have known. They just mentioned it. Oh. But, for example, he had coffee beans growing on the beach, which is wrong. Those are growing in the, fo- in the mountains, not the beach. Because the climate in the mountains is excellent for coffee beans, not the beach. Because it rains, which is very helpful. And also, the temperature and is constant, so it's pretty even for the beans to have great um, potential. So I saw the National Theater, excellent. Then we went to a archaeology history museum, which is interesting. A lot of it was about gold, like how gold was exported to Costa Rica and from like when Costa Rica started to become more wealthy and people started to move there and they got more. Talked about weapons and they had a lot of cool gold like statues, like of frogs and toads and alligators, snakes. One of was cool. It's talk- it like gold frogs and toads. It's talking about how in mythology and lore, the frog or toad is very revered because it can predict or change the weather. So like it knows what the weather will be or can like change it. That was cool. They had some artwork there, like a painter. I think his name was, his name was like Faba, his last name. But like, he, he's a current day Costa Rican artist, he's very famous. And he had a lot of cool paintings. One was called Dragon Breath. He had a lot of used lines, like black lines and black and white colors to make the stuff pop, like very modern art. Then we went to a coin museum. They had like multiple coin museums there. Costa Rican, they used the colones, named after Christopher Columbus, that's the national currency. But you can get around very easy in Costa Rica because 
declines in the U.S. dollar are the main currencies, and the main languages are Spanish and English. So you can get around pretty well if you use those. And the Cologne Museum, a lot of it was like the history of the Colones and its value compared to the U.S. dollar. And they had some cool replicas, and then they have current currency that's like to celebrate 175th anniversary of Costa Rica becoming a republic. So they had interesting coins and notes commissioned. Some of the coins they only made like a few of them, but some are still in circulation, so you might be able to get one. It talks about one of the presidents of Costa Rica, Jose Farrar, and he was all over the notes for the 175th anniversary, like the, the bill. We went to like a unique market instead, like where people were buy- selling items. It was interesting. They had lots of items, lots of stuff that tourists would love, like toys and coins and bags and t-shirts like i went to costa rica or like pura vida which means pure love that's a, like a very common saying that's said a lot in costa rica we said it like a million times it's said all the time and then the last stuff left was the farewell dinner so we had a farewell dinner which was like buffet style which really enjoyed and, and then we went home the next day no it was an amazing trip a great time met a lot of people made a lot of new friends there's a lot of people who are close by like in Chicago or not that far. And I got phone numbers. One thing that's interesting was the cultural differences of people because people come from all over the country. You could be from anywhere and wouldn't trip or be part of the program. And there's people from Seattle, Missouri, Chicago, Florida, New Mexico, California, like all over the country. We were the youngest ones, which was funny. We were the youngest two by like 10 years minimum. Was it all their first time going to Costa Rica on this kind of no. trip? One of the people who's really friendly, she was in Chicago. It was her third time. She's been there before. And then another gentleman, I know he's been second time. So at least two people have been multiple. So some of the people who have been there skipped some of the activities because they've already done them. So there was no reason to do it again. Because you could opt out of the activity if you want to do it. As long as you told the head tour guide and told the people in charge that you were opting out, skipping it, then they were fine. Because for one of the days, example, a lot of people skipped walking to where, like, of the 40 people, only, like, 20 went. I wanted to go into the city, so I didn't mind, but some people just didn't feel like it, which is understandable. It was a bus that took you into the city? Yeah, we took a tour bus every trip. And the same guy every time. She was great. What was the most favorite part of this trip? Uh, seeing the animals in the waterfall. Then the coffee farm. Then the, seeing San Jose. But also bonding, making new friends, having great experiences, that was way high up there, too. For some reason, people were really great, friendly, and, like, really community-based. I was a bit nervous because I wasn't involved in the program, so I was worried I'd be, like, an outsider. Mm Because some of the people have been texting for a long time and, like, even met in person. They knew each other before the trip. So I was like, oh, no. But there was other people who had nothing to do if it were guests, and the people who had stuff to do if it were, like, very friendly and welcoming and I'm going to talk to them after the trip already, so it's great. Perfect people to be on a trip with, so I would not change anything. Would definitely go back, maybe to a different part of the country, like the beaches next time. What are some tips for anyone who's thinking about it, about going to Costa Rica? Uh, so tips when choosing your destination, do research on where you're going to be going. Is it a beach climate? Is it rainforest climate? Packing's really key. Make sure you, you know... The weather, or just have a good judgment of what to wear because it gets very hot, but also it can rain, especially if you're in dry or wet season. Know that. Like, no when are you going to be in Costa Rica or dry or wet season? You were in the dry or wet season. The last week of dry season. So, like, if we'd been a week later, it would have been wet. Uh, what's the difference between dry and wet season? The main is rain. Like, it can rain in dry season, but when it gets wet season, it rains constantly. So that's from, like, March to November is wet season, and November to, like, end of March is dry season. And, like, you, you, coffee is usually, like, has its times that were its best. Like, this is some of the best time, like, March. But usually, though, by March, it's already over. Like, the harvesting's done. Look at excursions and also look at distances. Because you may be like, oh, boy, it's five minutes bus ride or i can go to all over the whole country in five minutes no because major i would say you have to drive there's not really public transit that's great besides like buses but it's more like commuter bus not like 
long distance bus ride. I'd probably recommend joining a tour company. So like having a tour guide take you everywhere you want to go. Especially if you're not sure where you're going or you don't explore, you're not used to other countries. I would say it's paramount to go with a tour company. Would it help knowing Spanish? I would say so. I don't think it's necessary to speak Spanish, but there are stuff that's only in Espanol. Some of the people only speak Spanish. And if you leave like the beaten path, like if you leave the hotel or not in like the government museums, some of the stuff's only in Spanish. So that's good to know both. Like the hotel is like all in English, but that's because it's like an Americanized hotel in Costa Rica. But like depending on where you go, it's good to know Spanish. Okay. Those are some tips. Bring a raincoat no matter what. I'd say that's a tip. It's in a rain at all, but you need one, I would say. Oh, I'll also say the interesting thing is that it's a lot more outdoorsy in the United States. Like most of the buildings and houses are all built to be outside and inside usable. So like, there's doors that are open to the outside, like huge doors or lots of balconies everywhere. And businesses do conduct business, like basically kind of outside format. Well, you mentioned that there's markets outside. Yeah, the one we went to was like in a warehouse that had like op- open to the outside, all open doors. But like it felt like it was outside, but it was it had a roof and stuff. Oh, and then also you feel at home too, because there's a lot of fast food restaurants there in the United States that are there. McDonald's is the national restaurant of Costa Rica. There's thousands of McDonald's in Costa Rica. I thought you were going to say, there's a lot of McDonald's, but... We passed like 10 McDonald's during our trip there. I mean, they have the Costa Rican food, like the fresh fruits and uh, beans and rice dishes. And the food, the like South American food was very tasty. Like they use this one sauce called Lozano. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't really explain it, but they use it on everything. It's like ketchup or like seasoning like it's not ketchup it's like a seasoning like they put it on everything like the big macs have it actually and like everything like even we had these mangoes like fresh mangoes and even they had the sauce out on the tour guide said like me with like the 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 seasoning interesting i i would say definitely it's great to go to new countries going exploring uh, broadening horizons especially if you can do it either if work labs or you have plenty of your life where you're able to go to new country do it thank you colin for joining me on this week's episode and thank you to everyone who listened to this week's episode be sure to check out his podcast chicago soccer talk with colin on youtube and history from the back pages and the bull and hawks sports show on spotify apple podcasts and wherever you find your podcasts have a great week